How's it going, guys? Open hand here. Playing a lot of Octopath Traveler 2 lately. Figured I'd uh, go ahead and show you guys my in-game build. Or builds, rather, for each of my characters. Um, haven't really seen anything like this on YouTube, so I figured I'd go ahead and share mine. A lot of the builds that I've seen have been, like, character-specific. 99% of them are, like, the 1 HP Hikari stuff. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to show, you know, builds you can do on characters all at the same time. And, uh, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, let's start here. This is probably my go-to team. If I had to choose, like, four characters, it's probably the ones that I use the most that have the most broken stuff. Especially since, you know, Cassie's there. Probably the best character in the game. But, uh, as far as classes go, I have Hikari as Hunter. Um, Casty as Arms Master. Agnia as Arcanist. And then Perdishio as Cleric. Now, there's probably going to be, like, quite a few niche setups here that you probably haven't you know, seen people use or even talk about or thought about or anything like that. But, um, you know, I, I think they're they're pretty good. A lot of them underrated too, right? I uh, decided to go Hunter on Hikari. You know, I know Armor Smasher is a very popular job to put on Hikari, but I think it's a little bit redundant. And the reason is, Arms Master is such, it's just such a good class in general. And it's got some, like, pretty good skills on there where I feel like it could be uh, spent elsewhere. And, you know, you're not really going to benefit too much more from putting it on Hikari than you would put it in on, say, um, Cassie, which I did. Now, I went Hunter because it has the highest base attack after Arms Master. And, uh, you know, I'm able to equip the bow so I can clear, like, trash mobs with, like, you know, Frenzy Fire or whatever. So that's why I decided to go that route with Hikari. Cassie, Arms Master, you know, obviously she's a real, really good sport, but if you put Arms Master on her and build her right, and suddenly she can do a ton of damage. Which, you know, I'll get in the equipment and all that stuff in a minute and I'll show you exactly how that works, what I'm talking about. After that, I got Agnia as Arcanist. Probably another kind of weird one that most people wouldn't use. Usually you see Arcanist on, like, Particio. But I think it's really, really good on Agnia. Um, just because, you know, the dancer skills and stuff are really good. Her latent ability is really, really good. And, you know, if you build her right, she can do a ton of damage as Arcanist, which, in turn, like, you know... The uh, Arcanist attacks are kind of like support skills anyways, really. I mean, if you're doing a lot of damage, you're going to be healing for a lot or recovering a lot of SP. So, yeah, I think it's a little bit better served on Agnia. And uh, after that, I got Cleric on Particio, which I think is really, really good. Because uh, the uh, the healing that Particio can do if you build him right again, I think the healing scales off your elemental defense, which I think Particio has about, like, it's like over 800. So he heals for quite a bit, plus some of his like passive or support skills, um, you know, boost healing stuff. I'll get into all that in a minute. But I think he heals for like 25 or 2700 each time on boosted heal. So that's really, really good at, you know, being able to like keep your party up and keep them topped off and everything like that. And not to mention the divine skill of Cleric is insane. If you put on Hikari, he gets an extra turn at the uh, end of the turn. So it's a lot of, a lot of really good flexibility there. And again, I like to kind of make my team very versatile, you know. Casting, obviously, again, like I said, great sport, but being able to, like, have her do some damage is nice. Agnia, same thing. Really good sport abilities, but can hit really hard with, you know, the setup I got, right? So I'll go ahead and show the equipment here. For Hikari, I'll have Battle-Tested Blade, Battle-Tested Axe, or Battle-Tested Spear, uh, Flayer's Adonishment, and Void's Neo Bow. Now, Battle-Tested Blade is insane because the equipped effect on it Raise the uh, potency of physical skills. I actually went and farmed another one of these for uh, Casty. It took me forever. <laughs> and then I got lucky when I was testing a build. I was like, I'll just go back and fight that guy again. And was actually got a third one, which I just, th I've thrown on Throne A for now. Which is pretty relevant, like it really does boost her, um, her uh, divine skill quite a bit. But uh, I'll get all that in a minute. But, um, so I have one on Hikari, and I do have one on Cassie as well. Uh, Battle-Tested Spear, uh, some chance to blind target. I have a Spear attack that attacks four to eight times. So the interesting interaction with this is it's either going to proc the blind or it's not going to proc the blind. If it does proc the blind, then you're going to get a stack for every hit that you do on the enemy. So it's kind of like decided at the beginning of, like, the attack, I guess, if you're going to get a blind or not. Kind of a weird interaction, but it's kind of cool to like suddenly get like eight sacks of blind on your enemy. Um, after that, got Flayer's Adonishment. I'm using an axe attack that hits like three or five times. Uh, 
you know, all enemies and stuff, so if I'm in a pinch and I need to heal, this is a pretty good ability to use. Sometimes still being able to dish out some damage and heal for quite a bit as well. After that I got Floyd's Neo Bow because I, I threw the accuracy on there because Frenzy Fire missed so much. I don't even know if accuracy matters on that attack to be honest, but if it does I have as much accuracy as I can to try to hit as many times, but um, you know, no telling. And I use Frenzy Fire just pretty much to clean up like trash mobs and stuff like that. After that I got Battle Tested Shield, which, um, you know, tons of physical defense, elemental defense. Recover HP and SP after each action. I think the HP recovery is like 200, SP is like 8, I think. So it's a pretty decent, you know, into turret effect. I also have the Antique Ceremonial Mask, which again, recovers SP at the end of the turn. Which is really, I mean, that kind of stuff's really good on Kari because he does spend a lot of SP. Now if you want, you can run something like Art of Disguise and just have like a flat 90 SP, which I think is fine. It's actually what I was doing before. I just recently threw this on here to, you know, kind of see how it would work out. After that, I got Conjurer's Raiment. Again, HP recovery. I think it's like 200 as well, so he goes for like, you know, 400 at the end of every, every turn, which is nice. Especially if you uh, have the uh, latent, or the uh, divine ability that, you know, the cleric can give him, so. Pretty cool synergies there. After that, Finisher's Clause to raise the damage dealt by critical hits, and then Thing of Ferocity to raise boosted. Alright, after that I got Casty. I guess I'll kind of, since I'm going to Casty, I'll just kind of go ahead and talk about this. Uh, if you play through the game, you probably have picked up, like, the Giant's Club. Which is another, it's kind of like the same thing as Battle Tested Blade, where it has the effect where it's like, raises the potency of physical skills, right? Now a lot of people, and they might be right, I don't know, but I kind of like to spread the wealth. That's far when I build my team, I like to kind of make everybody, you know, decent in their own regards, right? So, you know, a lot of people might put this on Hikari. And he would, he would do more damage for sure. But I decided I want to put on Casty. Because I think it's pretty cool to have her you know, do a lot of damage. And it's kind of in an interesting thing that you can do is with Throne A, if you have the Disguise skill. Um, the way that works is it will copy the character's class and all their weapons, right? So if I'm using Disguise on you know, the Arms Master and I have Giant's Club equipped it, along with you know, my second, or a second Battle Tested Blade, Throne also uh, benefits from, you know, those, uh, you know, equipped effects. So it's a little bit more bang for your buck in that regard, you know. Makes Throne quite a bit stronger as well as an individual character. So uh, that's kind of the route I decided to go. As far as the actual skills that I use on this, it's, uh, I really just use, you know, six-sided strike, which is like a single attack with each weapon. So in turn, what I did is I tried to find, you know, the highest attack weapons that I could get. As you can see here, I have a couple of the Lost Tribes, um, you know, weapons on here. Lost Tribes Spear, Lost Tribes Axe, which give me a uh, negative effect to, like, speed and uh, Lost Tribes Axe is, you know, crit here. But I don't think that really matters too much. Again, because I think, you know, speed I, shouldn't matter because I think you, you know, by default have your sword out. And the Lost Tribes Axe, you know, you do lose 100 crit, but in my experience, if you have, like, 450 plus crit, you're going to crit every time anyway, so I think it's a little bit you know, redundant to have, you know, a ton of crit, right? So I decided just as much damage as I can get out of that six sided strike, I'm gonna throw everything on here. And uh, it works out pretty well. She hits pretty hard, so. Um, after that, protect your shield. I have a little bit of crit on here just to balance out, you know, because again, I think it's like 450 or so, um, where you're gonna like crit every time. Like I have not seen any of my characters miss a crit when they're over 450, so you can protect, protect your shield on there, you know, make sure that I'm over 450. I don't know, you can technically probably put on something else if you want. Maybe if you get crazy and want to farm uh, another battle-tested shield, that'd be great, right? Uh, after that, or disguise here, um, you know, 90 SP, Just it's pretty necessary to be able to consistently use attacks if you're not using SP Saver, which I'm not, so. I mean, this is a really, really good, probably, I mean, best helmet in the game, probably in my opinion. After that, Royal's Guards Mail. Um, I'm using this on a lot of characters, just because the flat 750 HP is really, really nice. And you get really good, you know, pretty good defense, 160 across the board. I think it's probably the best just bang for your buck kind of armor you can get. So, yeah, you'll probably be seeing this quite a bit. 
And after that, two champion spelts, which these are farmable. I'm not really going to go into like how to get specific equipment in this video because it's going to take forever. This video is probably already going to take forever. But um, these are farmable. You can get as many as you want. And, um, you know, if there's any equipment that you're looking for, just I'm sure you can find it on Google. There might be like one or two things here that I've found that I could not find on Google that I'll just quickly show you how to get and stuff like that or tell you how to do it. So, uh, but yeah, these are very easy to get. You can, you know, farm and stuff like that. After that on Agnia, I got the Tonfa just for the Sun Chance to counterattack. I'm also running the Sun Shadow Staff, which raises the, you know, potency of light and dark base attacks. And also you can look at the stats down there. I mean, she hits pretty hard. 900 elemental, you know, attack with raised potency on light and dark. I mean, it's, she's no joke. Granted, she, again, is, you know, a support character, but I built her to a way where she can you know, do a lot of damage and stuff as well, so. After that, Wise King Shield to kind of raise the physical defense at the start of battle, which is nice. Ancient Circlet for more elemental attack, plus investments, elemental attack. Uh, Stone of Truth here. This is a really, really uh, cool accessory, which, if you're not sure what it does, it makes it so, you know, every fight, it's like you have already casted Advanced Magic, and it's permanent. You can read the effect there. So this is particularly good with, um, Arcanist because you know that the attacks will heal HP and heal SP. So if you hit twice, it's you know twice as much. It's just a really good supportive thing, and it obviously you know you do more damage with it and stuff. And after that, I got Coat of Arms. I'm a uh, big fan of defense in this game. Uh, if you haven't tried it, you know, fight somebody with you know what 450, 500 uh, defense, and then go fight them with 999 defense, and you will see what I'm talking about. It's, uh, it's pretty important. So, uh, but uh, yeah, a lot of the passive abilities, um, you'll see that I like defense quite a bit. For Particio, I mean, these two don't really matter. Um, because generally be using the staff here. Which has, uh, you know, physical defense on it. I'm using the Lost and Curse stuff, which I'm, you know, getting the positive effects using Blessing in the Skies. So, uh, if you're not sure, I'll just kind of go through these real quick. Just basically changes any negative effects to uh, positive effects, and all the curse stuff has negative effects along with the lost stuff, so synergize pretty well there. And then I'm also using the Librarian's Amulet to get more SP and elemental defense, because the element, or, uh, you know, since he's a cleric, I might have mentioned this already, but the healing scales off, you know, elemental defense, so it's nice to have quite a bit of that. Um, I guess I'll go out here, I'll go fight something real quick and just kind of show you a couple of the uh, busted, <laughs> busted things you can do here. Do you know this is not nighttime? I know a lot of build videos will do the nighttime stuff with uh, Throne and uh, Timnos. So they're like, look at my sweet nuke stuff. But um, yeah, no buffs here. Uh, what I'll do is, like, you can spin BP freely initially, right? I'll just defend because I don't want to kill anything. Right. But what you generally want to do, you go to, uh, Cleric. Or not Cleric, Merchant. Donate BP to... Casting. Alright, I got the support skills. She has her latent power every fight. Metal for concoction. You know, I'll mix, like... You mix three of them if you want. I'll just mix two. Usually I mix two and I'll go, like... Strengthening, diffusing, and then I'll go like Mighty Leaf, raise attack, right? Time Why not? So everybody gets BP, then generally I'll like, I don't know. Oops, go uh. Dancer's Divine skill, but I'll cast you. I'll just defend, I want to kill some, or you can be attacking, you know, whatever. Um, here I guess I'll uh. So maybe BP to Agnew. You need to do like... This is one of my favorite things to do. Get a remedy after you have this on you. All these buffs with everybody. So you get like just nine buffs on everybody. Yeah, that's nice then. Then it gets back to Agnew. Let's go full... Use her latent power here. Song of Hope. And it'll extend all the uh, remedy buffs for like, I mean, like here I go. five turns or something like that. Uh, let's see here. And then, you know, since 
Cassie still has it on, like, another thing you do is, you know, like, I don't know, replenish health, right? Really, really good. Um, let's see here. Okay. But, uh, yeah, again, I, I generally use Partitio as, like, a BB battery recently. I'll just, I don't know, throw, like, Alfred's Blessing on, like, Ikari, right? Um, an interesting thing, though, with the Remedy, too, is sometimes that, you know, affect all ability, it'll, it'll be one of the buffs that you get for some reason. And then you can, like, for example, if you have Ikari, your, the uh, you know, attacks will start hitting everybody. It's kind of it's kind of cool. It's random, obviously, but um, it it's kind of neat there. I guess I'll quickly go ahead and show you the skills that I have on the card that I use. I'm just getting Someday. But I mean, yeah, there's a lot of pretty interesting things you can do. Um, okay, so learn skills. I have one for limb, which is probably the best, just damage and attack for bosses and stuff like that. Um, Frenzy Fire just to clear trash. I got Aggressive Thrust, because it's, you know, 48 times. And again, with the, the blind stuff's pretty cool on that, with the uh, Battle Tested Spear. I got Wild Smash, to, if I want to, like, heal. Because uh, the weapon I have, you know, heals for 25% of damage done. Then I got Divine Protection. Uh, this skill's pretty insane. You boost this all the way, and say you have the uh, Divine skill from the uh, Dancer. You can give this to everybody for, like, four turns. And what it does is it... The next instance of damage is like ignored. You know, I know it says turns, but it's just literally just instance of damage. So, uh, real, really good ability. You know, a lot of synergies here. I'll do this. I don't know. We'll kill stuff. Not work. Wait. Well, There's no need for right. So just that's a couple just kind of fun synergy stuff you can do here. Okay, I guess I'll go back. Well, I guess I'll. Let me do another fight real quick, just kind of show you like how Stone of Truth works if you're not familiar with that. I'll do what I must. Uh, just, just donate a lot of BP to Agni and whatnot, right? And uh... I'll, try, I'll try to get speed back. But you'll see, this will, this will hit twice. See? I mean, look at all the SP that you restore with that. So that's kind of cool too. Kind of a neat thing there. Uh, Casty, uh, I mean, I'll just, I guess I'll just show you her damage real quick. Remember, there's no buffs on this. And the thing with Casty too is I'm not using the damage thing where it's like put you over 9,999. Just because six sided strike, it's, you know, attacks six separate times. And it's like not like a big burst attack where it does a shitload of damage. So you're still going to be doing like 60,000 damage, you know, especially if you're like broken a foe. And uh, they don't have their shields down and everything like that. But, um, yeah, I'll just... Bring it on. I didn't boost her. But, I mean, I'll just... Okay. It's, it's pretty good damage. Right. And that was just one boost there. But, I mean, if you have, like, attack ups and defense ups and all that stuff, like, you're obviously, or defense down, rather, on the enemies, you're going to be doing a lot more damage. If they're broken, you're going to be doing a lot more damage. But, um, I kind of found that it's probably better suited to use a different passive, or, uh, support ability on her, instead of doing the, uh, 9,999 thing. Because she is going to be doing quite a bit of support as well. Okay, so I'll go ahead and show you the uh, other four real quick. Try to go as fast as possible, and it's taking ages. Shut, sure. Seminos. That's good. Throw an A and. Oswald. Alright. So my other four. Get out of here real quick. Probably should have picked a place with a uh, closer tavern. Um, okay. So we got Oshet as a dancer. Because the way that I built her is very evade like I put a ton of evasive stuff on her. And just basically tried to like stack as much evasion as I could. And she very rarely gets hit. It's kind of cool. Um, but Dancer has a really good divine ability. And also has a little, like, quite a bit of vision on there. So it just seemed to work really well. Temnos, he's pretty much like Particio 2.0. I use him the exact same way. Um, but Particio does do it a little bit better just because it's light and power. Uh, after that, I got Throne also as a Dancer. Because, again, I like the... Uh, 
the uh, divine skill of the dancer quite a bit. So it just makes it a little more flexible party wise. That way you can run without agony or something. But it's always nice to have like that dancer ability to be able to spread the uh, you know attacks and abilities to to all. You know, so have her as a dancer. Plus, it, you know, she gets more speed and everything, and her uh, divine ability scales off speed. So it's it's kind of it's kind of nice. And after that, I got Oswald as an inventor. It's probably a pretty pretty niche one that I don't think I've never seen anybody do this, but I think it's really really good. And um, yeah, I'll tell you why in a second, I guess, once I get to the uh, equipment on him. But for Rochette, the equipment that I'm using, I'm using lockpick because you know evasion. Uh, double tomahawk, just in case I want to break like a shield or something to do an extra attack. A uh, befuddling gray bow because of the evasion. Adamant buckler evasion. Give me goggles evasion. Royal guards mail. Again, I think like, I mean her evasion's already so I think the HP is probably a little more relevant, and it's got good defense on it too. So I really, again, big fan of royal guards mail. Um, after that, I got gale feather, which gives me 120 evasion and it raises my speed and evasion at the start of battle. And after that, I got uh, Malia's Amulet, which recovers HP and SP after performing an action, which is very important because Hochette's SP is abysmal. As you can see, 114. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Um, it's really bad, right? So I even have to use, like, SP Saver on her, right? But Malia's Amulet, I think it recovers, like, 10 SP at the end of every turn, which is, is pretty big. So that way you can constantly use her, um, you know, late ability to summon a ton of beasts. Uh, after that, I got on uh, Timonos. Um, these don't really matter. I use the uh, Sacred Flame Staff on him. Now, this is one of the things that I could not find where to get on Google that I just happened to run into. So I'll uh, show you where this is at real quick if you're interested. You can actually get as many of these as you want. But all you're going to do is um, go to Stormhill here. And you're going to go over here to Castle May, East Tower. And there's going to be an NPC in there that you can get information out of that will expand the armory and then you just go back here and you go to the armor and uh, they'll have that staff for sale for like 60,000 I think but you can get as many as you want so if you're like me a big fan of defense it's just a really really good staff to have on any kind of like support even like if you're you know using characters to attack like it you know it's still really good to have that you know, almost 100 extra elements of defense but after that, I got Swift Shield just so uh, he can potentially go first. Um, Art of Disguise for the SP, Royal Guards Mail, again for the extra, extra HP. And then I got two Protective Necklaces, again for the defense. And again, you know, the defense also, or elemental defense also affects how much he will heal by. So it's nice to have a lot of that. After that, I got Throne, <laughs> my third battle tested blade that was a fluke drop. But, um,. Yeah, this will boost her divine ability, so she'll do a lot. I mean, I think she does like 70,000 or something if I take her out at night with uh, Temnos. So it's 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 pretty, I mean, it's, it's really is a pretty big increase in damage. Vengeful Knife for the speed. Uh, Swift Shield for the speed. Art Disguise for the SP. Again, Royal Guards me on Champion's Belts here. Again, a lot of the time, though, I like to use Disguise on Casty, so I have like two Arms Masters. I think it's just a, pr a pretty cool setup to, to do it that way. But, you know, that said, she can definitely hold her own and has her own class. So, um, pretty pretty flexible character in that regard. Um, after that, we got Oswald here. Now, the thing with, the thing with um, you know, Inventor is they can equip swords and they can equip battle axes, right? And the thing is, there's a battle-tested axe out there that gives you raised the potency of lightning and ice-based attacks, right? And there's a lot of swords out there that can raise potency on different elements as well. I decided to go with Guardian's Ice Blade just because, you know, I got the double raised ice uh, potency. So I can hit a little bit harder if I'm fighting something that, say, doesn't have, like, an elemental weakness. But, I mean, there's fire. There's a bunch of different stuff you can throw on there. But, um, yeah, just having these raised potencies is, is really, really nice. And I'm using Battle-Tested Staff on them for the, uh, you know, max elemental attack damage. Sun Shield, a little bit of HP. Hard to disguise to uh, have the extra SP in regards mail, and then I got two elemental augment, augment uh, blah, 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 elemental augment augmenters. Oh my gosh, what is English? But um, yeah, just to raise the attack to uh, as close to uh, 999 as I can. See, I'm pretty close. Not quite there yet, but still got a few levels. 
maybe I can get there. But um, another reason why the inventor is so good on um, on Oswald here is because in general, I think the inventor is probably like I don't think it's a very good class. I think the cooldown on stuff is just way too long. I think it's like seven turns or something on Arker's Coil, you know. But the way that I like to use them is at the start of you know the battle or whatever. I'll have the God, what is that called? Hold on one sec. A step ahead, right? I got a step ahead on which essentially kind of gives you like an extra SP in, a, in regard, right? But um, what I'll do is I'll just I'll just immediately I'll, I'll just use Arcus Coil to get that extra BP. So by the time the you know battle actually starts, it's my first turn. I can immediately use Alfin's Wisdom and then just nuke everything, right? Now it's a little bit like irrelevant if you're doing like casty stuff generally, um, just because you're gonna have full BP. But if you're not, I mean, you don't want to run with Cassie. I mean, this is a great way just to be able to, like, get Alfin's Wisdom immediately. And as, like, a standalone character build, I think Inventor's really, really good just because you can use Arker's Coil. And it saves you the extra spot. You don't have to have, like, boosted BP as one of your um, support abilities, right? You can run something else. And just the certain the amount the equipment that you can equip with the hammer and the sword to boost the uh, potency, I think, really makes Inventor, like, an ideal job for uh, Oswald, surprisingly, right? But, um, let's see, I think that's all the, uh, the gear there. Guess I'll go out here, I'll just kind of show Beast and stuff. And I just realized I forgot to show you guys my uh, support skills on my other characters, so I'll go back and get them after this. Oh, it is nighttime, okay. Um, one thing with Throne, right? Now, generally I like to use Disguise to, um, you know, copy Cassie. Now, something you could do is you could start her full power with her, uh, you know, sport abilities. As swift as a snake. And you can use the skies, right? And then you get like a free free turn to go as your disguised character, and it does not take up one of your uh, turns as disguised, which is kind of a pretty neat thing that you can do, right? Which is generally what I'll, that's what I'll do with Cassie a lot of time. But um, I'll just kind of show you the uh, Oswald thing here. Let's go. Oh, and I guess I'll show you the beast here too on um, my shot. I'm still kind of. So kind of looking for beasts. I don't really know what the best ones are. And Oshet is probably my, I mean, without a doubt, my least used character. But, um, oops. I'll just kind of show you what I got here, the ones that I remember. Uh, Mount Ape King, this is just like, this is like my trying spot, trying out new beasts, so he, he's pretty bad. Ancient Lizard's pretty good, hits for physical, and uh, gives your whole team a uh, defense buff. Black Panther hits lightning and uh, debuffs the enemies. Somehow I forget exactly what, what happens, but uh, you know, Dreadwolf, all these are like bosses that you can get later in the game. Headless Horseman's a really, really good one. You can you hit a physical attack on everything, and you get increased attack and increased crit. But um, again, like I said, I'm still looking around, so I don't really know what the really know what the best ones are. I mean, it's a, I mean, it's a no. decent single target thing there, I guess. But uh, okay, here. So right. So what I'll do, Arker's Coil. Put it on the wrong person. <laughs> Shit. Oh, you know what I mean, right? I'm put on him, and then he would have another BP now, and then I'd be able to go into, uh, you know, his thing, and it's just become like a new machine, which would make him attack three times with each element. But, um, that said, okay, I gotta show you my, uh, support abilities real quick. Alright. So, on a chat, I have SP Saber, a step ahead, every base, and BP regen. Because I like to, uh, she's only really good when you have a lot of BP, being able to like get out the big beasts and all that stuff and summon a ton. So BP regen is pretty, pretty nice. SP saver because she has no SP. Step ahead, I think it's essential on everybody. And then every basic to increase her evasiveness. On Tim notes here, fruits of labor. I have this on a lot of people. Again, big fan of defense. This basically once you find or uh, you know learn every ability. You pretty much get like 100 extra physical and elemental defense with that. So it's a pretty good thing to have. I also have a step ahead and I also have BP regen because I do use uh, Temnos as more of a, like a BP battery. So being able to get you know, that extra BP is nice. After that, throwing in, I got deal more damage. This is good if you kind of want to run, um, you know, her like just as a thief sometimes as well because her you know, divine ability will definitely get over the 9,000. 
the 199 cap, but if you're going more like a disguised, casty kind of thing, you could probably throw in like Fruits of Labor or something if you want a little bit more survivability, you know? Because again, I, I, I you know, since you're using Six Volt Strike the whole time, it's like, you know, 60,000 damage that way. You don't need the, uh, deal more damage because it's, you know, not a nuke, it's more like six smaller separate attacks. But, um, yeah, after that full power, which I showed you guys why you get that extra attack with, um, with her at the start, and it doesn't take up a uh, disguise thing. And then upgrade accessories for uh, more damage, more crit. After I get Oswald, advanced magic master, so you can have another turn of, you know, his divine skill. Price of power. Wait, did I? Did, oh, I didn't talk about price of power on him. Your okay, price of power actually affects healing as well. So it's really, really important that uh, you put that on any of your clerics and stuff that you want to be healing during the uh, the battle. It's pretty substantial too. I think it's almost like a thousand uh, life increase or so. So um, put that on if you have a cleric that you want to use for, for healing. But um, price of power on him, obviously. Let's do more damage. Uh, step head, everybody. And again, free slaver because big fan of some defenses. Now let me go grab the other four real quick. Show you them. Tissue. Oops. Sorry, Agnia and... Casty. All right. All right. That's a long video. All right. Um. Skills. All right. So far, Tisho is very similar to Temenos. I think actually the exact same as far as support skills go. Price of power again because it does affect healing pretty substantially. Step ahead. Uh, full power. Actually, I don't know. I don't have full power on uh, Temenos, but full power on him because his light ability is his BP again. He's Kind of a BP battery, he's just a better one than Temenos, really. But, um... Yeah, then on Hikari, Fruits of Labor, deal more damage, step ahead and peak performance. Peak performance is nice because he heals for quite a bit, especially if you have the uh, end of turn uh, Divine Skill on him, you know? So he can pretty consistently be at max health. And it's really good just, I mean, to clear trash mobs and stuff, start the fight with, you know, I don't even know how much extra damage it is. It's, it's a lot. It's like 30, 40, 50, something like that. So, a good way to just clear trash with that. On Agnia, price of power for the damage, step ahead, free to labor, and SP saver, just because Arcana spells are pretty expensive. So, it's, it's nice to have SP saver on there. And for Casty, fruits of flavor, and step ahead, full power for the concoct, and upgrade accessories for the additional damage, right? And I think that's about it. Hopefully that's about it. Probably forgot a thousand things, but that's okay. Um, I, I know it's a long video, but thanks for bearing with me. Um, if you have any questions, feedback, anything like that, just uh, let me know. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I will see you guys later. Peace.